Hey, 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 happy day 612 of what she up to now. She being Sharon Hornellstrom. I love my initials. That's why I didn't change my name when I got divorced. S-H-E is a lot of S-A-H. So, and the name Horn, H-O-R-N-E for women or girls, not the best name to grow up with. It was actually pretty funny. It's funny when I look back now. It didn't feel funny at the time, but it's funny now. Um, it just made sense to keep my hyphenated name, which is long and, and cumbersome, and I'm not sure why I did it. When I first got married, when I was in corporate America, and I thought, oh, you got to keep your name hyphenated, so I did it, and just kind of kept it that way. After 25 years, it becomes a habit, and so you're like, yeah, don't bother changing it. Anyway, I'm calling today a catch-up day because yesterday I made my videos in the morning. I always make my videos. Actually, I didn't make them in the morning. I was doing a garage sale with my mom and sisters, and since I'm not seeing very well these days, I'm not driving, and I've been driving for over, a, gosh, almost two years now, which is a secret that nobody knows, but I don't drive anymore. And as such, my sister was coming to get me, so she came and got me early before I even made my videos, and I ended up making one on the front step before she got here, and then I made uh, the rest of them in my old house in the garage because I needed lighting and of course this is funny the ex-husband has all the lights and all of the fixtures in the garage all installed and fixed and looking really good he's he's the master of the garage men like their garages right women like their kitchens so it's been significantly interesting and emotional to revamp my kitchen it's gonna be amazing but it's uh, I I built the whole house I designed the whole house when we built it and I, know, I drew it out a lot on paper and then I hired an architect to draw it out on the blueprints and I planned it in a software program back in the day I can't remember what it was called but they had a, a home builder software where you could actually build the software and this is a long time ago so it was rudimentary but now they have amazing tools but it was before all of they were available there was a software that I bought and I designed the house on it did the plans and you could put furniture in it and kind of turn it around and move it and it was like not like it is today but it was still really fun to build and visualize this home so it's fun to you know give it a facelift and do some you know just a cosmetic facelift and make some changes and you know put in stone countertops and things that I wish I'd put in in, in the first place but they were very very expensive back then they weren't even you know 25 years ago it was just like yeah no <laughs> not putting those in so doing that so I'm in the garage with all of the old closet organizers and cabinets and things we've pulled out um, it's a mess but I got them done I got them done and then we actually had to bury um, one of our cats got killed and so we were burying her out there with my daughter's dog so it was my daughter's dog and daughter's cat so we wanted to bury her in the woods there so she would have a safe home to land and I was thoroughly impressed my son-in-law is um, working to be a journeyman lineman I can't remember what step he is fifth or sixth I think it's a sixth step now whatever that means and so he dug the hole and I was like thoroughly impressed that he can dig such an amazing hole so quickly but he said he gets paid for digging holes so that was kind of a positive note on a negative kind of thing or a sad thing just a sad thing he had her for six over six years and so she was a nice little kitty uh, <clears throat> and I'm gonna cry I cried yesterday and the, I cried enough over the kitty I loved her but you know it's things happen people and and animals come in and out of our lives for a reason so catch up day I did the videos but I only processed one last night by the time I got home last night I went and had pizza and wine with my mom one of my sisters and my mom after the cat and, and make my videos. and so by the time I got home I was tired and I guess I didn't have wine I just had lemon water because I knew I wanted to process my videos but I was still tired by the time I got home and I kept falling asleep processing one so when I got the one done I was just gave myself permission to go to bed so I'll process the rest of those videos today and then I have to do today's videos so that's why I'm thinking it's sort of a catch-up day and then I'm gonna have to go over and clean up all the garage sale stuff because I don't want to be doing that with my granddaughter tomorrow I want her to get back to a little bit more normal schedule we had a, a messed up week last week because we were there setting up and, and helping most days of the week and I think that's really hard on her it's too many transitions I know as an adult transitions are are difficult and we need time to roll from one thing to the next you know think about coming home from work or um, things like having to go to the grocery store and stuff it takes some time and energy to work up to having to do those things as adults so for children it's even worse and she has a lot of transitions every day just being with me so to throw in the mix of going to my mom's being at my mom's being around my sisters setting up a bunch of stuff being in a different place to play or, or do activities it's just it's a lot for a, a 
preschooler, right? So I want to make sure that I get that done today so that she is in a more stable, safe environment. So uh, I think it was a pretty good garage sale. I think my sisters were whining, but I never did a garage sale. I think I did one with my sister 20, uh, probably 35 years ago. And I said I would never do another one because it was a ton of work and it wasn't, it wasn't fun. And so, you know, when you, when you pay thousands of dollars for something and then you sell it for $2, it's just, it's, you know, and then people want to dicker about $2. I don't personally think that's fun. There's a reason I just sent all of my stuff to charity. Um, it's just, to me, it feels like a blessing and giving, just giving things away feels better than trying to get a couple cents on the dollar for something that you have and, you know, things that are brand new. It's, it's just a dumb thing to me. So, <clears throat> You know, it's kind of like piss, picking your pissing, picking your audience and picking the people you want to work with. Do you want to work with people that can afford your products and services, or do you want to work with people that are going to that can't afford your products and services? So they're going to nickel and dime you to death, expect everything for free, and drive you crazy. That is always our choice. Sometimes we think in our minds that we have to work with people that can't afford us, and we're perpetually frustrated and upset because we know we're worth more then we're charging people. We know we're giving them this tons and tons of value and they're not appreciating it because I'll tell you one thing, people that get everything for free get entitled. They don't appreciate anything. You can give everything away for free and people will just think they're entitled to everything for free. Now, this is weird coming for me because I give everything away for free. I share everything with anybody that asks or that, that needs help. Um, <coughs> Because I like to, and, and I, and that's me. But I also know that a lot of those people will never do business with me, and I'm okay with that because plenty of people do business with me. But I know that some people just need help. Some people need a hand. And I know that the people that I share with and give things away to for free are probably not going to be my customers, but other people will be attracted to me. The right people will be attracted to me because I'm willing to, and I like to, and I like to share information and give things away for free, if that makes sense at all. I know it's sort of counterintuitive for most people, but the more you give away, the more you share of yourself, the more you're attractive to people because the more people that should be wanting to work with you and should be wanting to be in your life see you and notice you and are attracted to you. So it's weird, but it's true. It's part of why I'd just rather give all of my material things away than have a garage sale. So enough about the garage sale because <laughs> you'll probably never hear me talk about doing or being involved in another one. Uh, and that might be not true too. My mom said something last night about wanting to do it next year because this wasn't the best time of year and I was just silent. I just didn't say a word. I'm like, mm, maybe I'll live somewhere else. <laughs> when that happens, we'll see. Getting ready to travel. And as I suspected, at least the cruise portion of my traveling the first week of November, it's going to be unlikely that I can do my usual morning routine of getting up, making my videos, processing them, and getting them out. So before I go, over the next three to four weeks, I need to do not only my usual daily uh, routine and content creation, but I need to create the content for at least the Happy Every Day segment, the... Uh, blood pressure challenge. I'm doing a 90 day challenge. So that's like dead smack in the middle of the challenge. So I need to do all those and produce those and schedule those for delivery while I'm gone. And then my daily, my daily supersize your business segment. I want to do that every day. Could I not do it for a week? Yeah, but I would, I would really, really miss it. So, <laughs> cause I love doing it. It's really fun. It's fun for me to look into and understand some of the expressions, some of the things, some of the words that totally impact us and our customers, even though we might not think it's impacting us. I mean, it's like our underlying currents and beliefs. We just think they're our beliefs. We just think they're the way we are. We don't very often actually step back and say, hmm, where did that come from? Why do I think that? Why do I believe that? Why did I say that? My daughter was giving me a hard time the other day because we were shopping for something and I'm like, geez, that's so expensive. And it's possibly because I don't shop at all. I, I'm like the anti-shopper. I, I joke that when God was handing out the shopping gene, he totally missed me as a woman. I missed the shopping gene. And I'm finding that more and more entrepreneurial women, business owner women are like that. We just, we, we just don't have any time or energy to shop. I am one of those people. I got all my shopping done when I was a teenager. Sorry about that. 
that. So I don't need to do that. I just don't need to shop. So it's a catch-up week. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to call back the person that just called me. I wish you an amazing day. I will. Um, I want to talk about what the blood pressure challenge was about today, but since I got a call, I'm going to take that. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye. Have an amazing Sunday.